Yeah, Chef, you should probably know. It's me. It's you. It feels very perverse to end it because it's been incredibly meaningful. You know, I love this cast. I love working with the crew, my fellow writers. I've had some of my happiest times in my career being in the writer's room and working with them. I'm quite a sort of softy, really. I like the family vibe we have around the show and the relationships we have. But one of the few things I'm able to be really tough about, I think, is protecting like the show and um, the, its integrity. And the more and more we discussed it in the room, the more and more clear it became to me that this sequence of, uh, of Logan's death, the competition over whether to sell or not, intersecting with an election. Macon will be the next president of the United States. And then his funeral ended with the show ending. And once that became clear, I didn't really have any doubts. I had lots of emotional sadnesses, but it felt like, OK, this is how this show goes. Hey. Hey. Finishing production in Barbados, on the one hand, it was magical. On the other hand, it was so incredibly sad. The only way I could do it was to be somewhat robotic, actually. I was very, OK, let's do it, let's do it. <laughs> um, because I kept getting hijacked by, you know, all that kind of tsunami of, that's the last time we'll do that, that's the last time we'll do that. And I think the actors felt that as well. There was an odd kind of emotional tension. We anoint you. You get the bauble. The counterpoint to that was the lovely scene we call Meal Fit for a King. That sense of recaptured innocence. Kids just being kids, no matter what their income. Everything seemed possible, and yet... Wear your crown, sir. Oh, no. No, 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 my understanding of the show has always been that it's a tragedy, and therefore every moment of hope like that is so cruel because you're just waiting for that shoe to drop, you're waiting for their essential natures to be exposed and to break your heart again. How do you feel about a self what you mean? Yeah, I can sing for my supper. <laughs> the idea of Tom being the eventual successor, that had been something that I thought was the right ending for, for quite a while now. Follow the boss, you know, I uh, digest strategy and implement. Even though he's not exactly the most powerful monarch you'll ever meet, his power, you know, comes from Matson. Tom will honestly suck the biggest dick in the room. That's just my assessment. I was in the air. Those figures who, who drift upwards and make themselves amenable to powerful people uh, um, are, are around. Shiv. As with Thomas' betrayal at the end of season three, everything was always working towards this idea of Sarah's character of Shiv ultimately sabotaging herself um, and sabotaging the deal. I can do this. I don't think you'd be good at it. What? I don't, I don't even believe you. I don't believe you. Jesse kind of, I hate this expression, stuck the landing with this climactic showdown, if you like, between the three siblings. I love you, but I cannot fucking stomach you. The final ripping off of the bandage to expose that terrible, terrible truth, so simply by Roman. We are bullshit. Was just such a heart-rending moment. We're nothing. And yet so inevitable. And that's, again, good tragedy should feel inevitable, shouldn't it? That this is it's the essential truth of those characters and the consequence of their nature and their upbringing. Everything led to that one moment. Um, and so on that level, it was perfect. It was perfectly painful. I've thought about all their stories. You know, they don't end, they will carry on but it's sort of where this show loses interest in them because they've lost what they wanted, which was to succeed, which the, you know this prize that their father held out. In a reductive, brutal way, Roman ends up exactly where he started. He is that guy still, and he maybe could have easily been a playboy jerk with some slightly nasty instincts and some quite funny jokes. He could have stayed in a bar being that guy, and this has been a bit of a detour in his life, I would say. 
Shiv is still in play, I'd see, in a rather terrifying, frozen, emotionally barren place. But she has got this kind of non-victory, non-defeat. I mean, there's going to be some movement there. There's still a lot of, of that game to play out, but that, that's where we leave it. And it feels like it's going to be hard to progress for them emotionally, given the things they've said to each other. For Kendall, this will never stop being the central event of his life, the central days of his life, central couple of years of his life. Maybe he could go on and start a company or do a thing, but the chances of him achieving the sort of corporate status that his dad achieved are very low, and I think that will mark his whole life. I don't feel like I'll be able to write anything as good as this um, again, because I, I think just feel like it's an arena that I'm so interested in and the, the group of people who've made it have been so talented. Sounds a bit banal, really. I just feel gratitude. I really feel massive gratitude to, particularly to Jesse, um, for, you know, the greatest, loveliest collaboration I've ever had. It feels really scary and foolish to, to end but with that sense that it must end. So that's what I guess I cling on to.